do you want to do this live or do you want to do this offline? I mean, we can do it. However, uh, um, don't matter, mate. Dude. We'll do it offline. Nobody's going to listen live. We only have two people that listen normally, anyway. So <laughs> that's all right. Oh, I think my mom's asleep. Um, so time for some button hitting, and then uh, we'll get this thing going. You have reached the life model decoy of Tony Stark. Please leave a message. What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Side Scheme, a podcast about everybody's favorite superhero card game, Marvel Champions. I am one of your hosts, Banana Crapshoot, and with me, as always, is my perfectly balanced co-host, Tommy of Titan. Tommy, how are you? Mm, I have returned. I'm good. Good. So what have you been up to, man? We haven't uh, recorded for a while because nothing's really been going on, and Mm then... um, French people selling Hulk packs, um, mm-hmm. so spoiling yeah. spoiler season. Uh, yeah, I'm hyped for uh, all the spoilers that we've been getting from uh, the content creators. So that's that's been good. Um, lots of content being pushed out, which is a good thing. Both articles, podcasts, videos, and everything. So that's nice to keep um, to get get us through in the United States without product. Unless you were fortunate and ordered um, some stuff from overseas, but I've just been hanging in there. Not a lot of not a lot of games getting in for me. Been a little hectic, uh, you know, just family time stuff mostly, and then kind of being tired at the end of the night and not um, staying up and pushing through and getting some games in. I got you. Yeah, I haven't honestly. I haven't played um, Marvel Champion, a Marvel Champions game, um, probably since last time we talked. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know we got the new draft league going, so I got to get those games in. Um, yep. Because we only have what a week left or two weeks left. Uh, I think it's roughly two weeks. I think it's the 29th that okay, we're capping so, it at. Yeah, so we got two weeks. So, um, but I've been slacking. I just been um, with like work, working a lot, and work's picking up even more now. Um, that's getting warmer, and yeah, just life stuff and of my own. Um, tangents I get on for other games and stuff has me uh, I haven't played really in a little bit and I kind of feel bad about it but it's whatever Come um, on. What are you doing? well I think that I think the main thing is it's like I, like if we lived in the UK or Australia or something and I could have Black Widow or Doctor Strange um, like I should have you know then I would be playing more because I have those new characters and new cards to that open up the deck building but um, being in the states with Asmo Day USA, not shipping any new product, that's kind of why I haven't played. I think is the main reason because I've been looking forward to playing those new cards and haven't had a chance. Yeah, for sure, that definitely impact. Uh, you know your people's excitement for sure. I mean, I, I'm super excited for Doctor Strange and for other people to have him and me not to have him readily available is uh, definitely frustrating to say the least. You know, I mean, if I really wanted to, I could have bit the bullet and um, ordered them. I, I opted not to. Right. I mean, I already get it. Like, I already have the, the subscription through Team Covenant. And then um, I get one locally if I can. And then the whichever one I get first um, is usually the one that I'll use for our Hero Pack giveaways that we've been doing. Um, each uh, Hero Pack that came out. But then... Um, the other one to keep for myself so i mean i'm not buying the third pack basically is what i'm saying <laughs> yeah i don't think anybody blames for that um all right so you got anything else you want to talk about how's uh how are the kids um you start mowing kids your lawn good. yet yeah mowing some lawn a little bit um kids are good trying to get the uh yard in a little better shape get the kids outside more uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's the personal life. You still working? Like you yeah. going out, or are you working from oh, home? Yeah. Forty hours a week, um, whether I'm from home or, or in the field. It's been mostly field lately. Um, so, been busy. Been definitely been busy. That's good. Um, yeah. So I guess we'll move right into what everybody, if they listen, 
both people. What they came to listen to is possibly um, our spoiler that we that uh, FFG was kind enough to give us. Um, so I posted that in our team side scheme uh, chat channel so we can look at it easy. Um, okay. But I'll let you do the honors and uh, read off oh, you're too, our I, first. I you're too kind, Banana. Um, you did all the work. Why do I get to read it? People you, you like the, the sound. Man. Pe- people like uh, the sound of your sultry voice. Oh, yeah. That must be it. Uh, all right. Well, we got the um, – it's an ally. It's an aggression ally, Sentry. Um, Robert Reynolds, four-cost aggression ally. He has two thwart with one consequential damage. Three attack with one consequential damage. Um, he is an Avenger. He's got five hit points, the energy resource, and he has the text forced response after sentry enters play under your control. Deal yourself one encounter card. Love it. Yeah, he's a he's a beefcake man. He is uh he is good and he comes with a pretty um, gnarly additional cost, but man, that's if you plan on keeping him on the table, uh, you know, for the duration of his health and not blocking with him prematurely, that's a lot of it. Yeah, that's 15 damage for four, which is like 3.75 uh, damage per, per resource, which is very good. Mm-hmm. One thing I have to say is, um, I want to highlight the, the two thwart. Um, because not a lot of aggression allies have the ability to thwart for two. Um, if you look at Valkyrie's one thwart, Tigra's one thwart, Hulk can't even thwart. Uh, so for people that are want to play like Thor aggression and his main issue being thwarting, here we have an aggression ally that you can thwart with in a pinch if you need to. Yeah, definitely. I don't. I don't even think he's a the kind of guy that thwarts in a pinch. I think I'm. I'm looking to thwart with him more often than not. Probably just because that's in an aggression deck. That's usually the area you're lacking in. So I mean, he's yep. going to get you there. Um, the problem is with like a Thor build. He's pretty much your whole turn unless you're playing like maybe him in a mean swing. Um, if you're fortunate enough to have like a large hand or some double resources or something, but he's um yeah he's he's expensive. He he takes a toll on your hand plus you're dealing with an extra encounter card you're really going to want to be careful uh the rounds you're taking that extra encounter card you know if you're already playing a heroic uh difficulty then you know that's a potentially a third encounter card if there's any side schemes out with the hazard icon you know you could be looking at four encounter cards it's it's definitely risky um there's no doubt about that and you got to make sure that you're prepared for it you know maybe you've got blockers readily available things like that um, before you commit to playing this guy yeah that's a good point about the heroic mode because you're already getting those additional encounter cards Mm -hmm. I mean that could be a pretty that could end the game you know like if you're like oh I can't hit an advance this turn let me play sentry Yeah, probably not a good idea to play sentry if if you really can't afford the hidden advance and you know there's two in the deck then that's and mutagen too you pick your spot yeah, you definitely need to pick your spot when you're playing this character. Um, but he, like we said, man, there's some serious upside there. I mean, his his whole stat line is ridiculous. Yeah, it is. Four costs is expensive, but he's five health. Five health. And yeah, man. five health. Like naturally, it's it makes it worth putting upgrades on this guy. I mean, if you wanted to put inspired on him, you it would it would be worth it. Oh, for sure. I just even without. That whole Spider Woman aggression leadership deck I keep building in my head just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> yeah, that deck is. Uh, that, that, I mean, we know so little about Spider Woman, and already, you know, I, I feel like half the player base fantasizes about her, and the other half fantasizes about Hawkeye. Yeah. Um, one thing I will note is he is an Avenger. Um, I don't know mm-hmm. if you, I don't remember if he said that or not. Um, but yeah. Sentry. I'm excited that he's in the game. I'm kind of uh, surprised he's in this early into the game's life cycle, but um, I'm excited that he's in. Yeah, he's mean, a, he's a, he's cool a big time. He's a big time powerhouse as far as characters go. Oh yeah. I mean, not that not that the Hulk isn't, because the Hulk is is definitely a powerhouse. I mean, there's a ton of iterations of the Hulk, but 
you know, this is basically the equivalent to Superman in uh, in this universe. I know he's got a little more of a personality disorder, but he's definitely on on the same uh, power scale as that kind of character. All right, so quick question for you: You brought up the Superman thing. Mm-hmm. Do you think Sentry or Hyperion is a more of a Marvel Superman? Probably Hyperion, but I mean they're both really similar. Um, yeah. As far as like powers go. Um. Yeah, I, I mean, I would probably say Hyperion. Um, although Hyperion is not, Superman's often like portrayed as like you know this super just and righteous character, and Hyperion is not so much that character nope, in the Marvel no. universe. So that's kind of why, and not that Sentry is, he has his own demons, but um, I mean, he he seems to fall more on the the side of good than Hyperion. Yeah, for sure. Um, you got any other thoughts on Sentry? Um, nothing, nothing major. I think he's, I think he's definitely good. I definitely think he's going to see play. I just, one thing that I think about the allies in general that they've been releasing and previewing lately is we're, we're starting to see like a lot of more expensive allies coming out in these packs, like, um, Iron Man coming out in the Doctor Strange pack or, or depending on your geographic location already out um the the she-hulk preview we saw um from i believe that was uh is that dexelsior's yeah that was dexelsior yeah yeah there um that she-hulk preview i mean she's another four cost ally with huge potential you know if you invest all those uh honorary avengers on the her all 12 um yeah uh but it's it's just it's I don't know how much room there is for that many four cost allies in a in one deck. You know There's what I mean? Not many. That's yeah. I, I'm thinking you can't really have more than two in a lot of decks, and and it's not like every deck is is a teamwork or not a teamwork a, a leadership deck. So right. Um, I just feel like there's a lot of competition at that spot where like your two to three cost allies um are a lot easier to fit in the deck. Well, my so, leadership decks are mostly two or three cost allies with like vision. You know, that's yeah, that's good. that's how that's how it usually goes. And even in any like ally heavy deck, I mean, Nick Fury aside, he's a little bit of a different character yeah, he's, just because of that three card rebate that you're going to get more often than not. He's just so much uh, value depending what you do with him that he's kind of his own animal. Yeah, yeah. So he, I mean, if you count the three cards you draw, you really aren't paying the same, like really paying four for him. You're kind of just like advancing your deck, but um, yeah. So I just think that that slot is becoming more and more competitive when you look at it, and you look at the, the hero or the allies that we have right now. And uh, what do we got? We got uh, you said Vision. We got Falcon. We got Nova. Uh, we're not counting Nick Fury. Then you got uh, Daredevil and Justice. Um, Luke Cage is four, also yeah. isn't he? Luke Cage, yep. He's a, he's a four cost ally. I mean, I I just don't think you want to include more than two in a lot of decks unless you have like a really aggressive resource package, like a Black Panther style deck where you're just running max resources, all the triple or all the double resources, all the power of resources, all your vibranium. Um, that's. I don't know. I'm just, I'm not seeing room for that many of these allies. So you really have to pick the two ish that suit you best. And I, I do think that these, some of these allies are worth investing upgrades in and like even building your deck around slightly, whether it's including more energy resources or whatever resource type it takes to trigger their abilities or it's just even just including inspired in your deck as a slot. I think it's, it's definitely worth considering uh, supporting these allies in some ways. They're, they're definitely powerful. And that's, I mean, that's a good design space too, because then um, you're forced to have to make a decision, right? You can't just because yeah. that's your turn. Then you play that big ally. That is your turn. You're probably not doing anything else. So, um, yep. but yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I mean, the aggression allies, right? So Tigris three, Hulk's two, Valkyries three, Hercules. Hercules is, is you know, six. 
but in flux. can get discounted. <laughs> yeah. But his base cost is six. So, I mean, if you're building an aggression deck and you got room for a four cost, I mean, Sentry or Nick Fury, I mean, I guess it depends. Um, solo, multiplayer, and the rest of your build. But, um, hot, uh, true or false, Sentry will be the overall best aggression ally when the Hulk pack comes out. Mm hmm. It's tough. That's tough. I tend to think that Hercules hasn't beat, even though uh, it's an extremely controversial um, opinion. Just because I think you quite often are paying, uh, like three, yeah, three or four for Hercules in in almost all of the difficult uh, encounters. You know, whether it's Mutagen or Ultron or Claw, I feel like you're you're seeing enough minions where you can get him for probably about four. Yeah, let's be real. So you're not bringing Hercules in your aggression deck when you're playing against Wrecking Crew or yeah, Rhino. Yeah, you're just not. Sure, he's he's more he's more of like a niche ally. He's got a the situation's got a call for him, but when it does, he is he is an amazing value. Well, was it Steve was on with us and he said he paid one for him. Yep, and that, so I mean that, that's that's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, he's if in all a bad... you do is block with him, he's a great value at one. <laughs> yeah. Especially against Ultron drones, like, sure. Um, so, yeah, that's it. That's Sentry. We will have an article up uh, comes that'll go out with the podcast, same time. Uh, that'll basically have probably a lot of the rehashed um, phones dropping off counters in the background. <laughs> um, that's it. So, you want to move into... Uh, we were supposed to have a guest with us tonight, but he is breaking his uh, quarantine and is out uh, socializing and not social distancing. So uh, he's not with us, and that was the winner of the first scheme league, the side scheme draft league, Just Jack. Um, so we're soldiering on without him because we got the spoiler we wanted to get out. Um, do you have any thoughts on Jack winning overall you want to touch on for the podcast? Yeah, I mean, uh, as far as I'm aware, there's not really a whole lot of competitions in, um, you know, Marvel Champions. So I'm pretty sure that him being the champion of the only competition for Marvel Champions makes him like the de, the de facto world champion, basically. So Stop. even though he's not here, I'm, cr I'm crowning him Stop. the de facto world champion. Stop. That's. Uh, I mean, listen. That's. That's just. That's the truth. I mean, slice it how how you may. Is it anybody that, anybody that drafted before Jack and allowed him to get Iron Man at seventh pick out of eighth or out of eight overall? That's that's a shame. You should all be ashamed of yourself. I'm looking at you, Kennedy. <laughs> hey, Kennedy did pretty good with his Black Panther stuff. So. Yeah. Um. So now we kicked off season two of the Scheme League, and that's a little bit different um, than mm -hmm. how we did season one. So you want to tell everybody what your differences are, and the main one is not allowing me to pick the scenarios. <laughs> yeah. So, well, well, we we kind of collaboratively picked the the schedule. Um, I know that I asked you to test a couple things for me. I tested some things. I had Scott testing some things. I had. Uh, few people testing things to give me some feedback and basically I wanted to have people say games were close or I won or I lost and have kind of a mix of uh, reviews from each um, encounter and, and just also to keep in mind like people's varied skills what decks they were playing like trying to make it so that it was it was challenging but winnable um, so that was uh, the first thing we wanted to change uh, about the league the next thing I wanted to change is I wanted to, to make it a, a little bit shorter so it's a little less daunting to get done. So we cut one game out. We made it three games long. Um, uh, the last thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to add a little more um, uh, variety, maybe, is the right word, to the draft. So we decided to open it up. Um, and what we did was we allowed each participant to draft two heroes and two aspects. What? <laughs> what? What? Uh, you had to do 
for the league was you had to um, use those heroes in a variety of ways as well as your aspects. So the first game you played would be one of your heroes and one of your aspects. The second game would be the other hero and the other aspect. Um, And then the third game would be uh, playing two-handed with you know everything you drafted both your heroes both your aspects um have to be represented in that game so we're playing um heroic one rhino with goblin gimmick for week one uh week two <laughs> we're playing uh risky biznick heroic one um with a mess of things and uh what is week three is expert mutagen formula and i can't remember the modular set is it is it just uh I think it's um Doomsday Chair, right? Um let me look in the pin messages because I honestly don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, I haven't even been like thinking about that one. I'm just trying to get through the first two. Yeah, Doomsday Chair, Mutagen. Yep. The reason I kinda uh giggled when you said the <laughs> the rhino um on a goblin glider is the most preposterous thing. Um, I know, I know, but it, it's, <laughs> it's it interesting because it makes him, like, attack you more, which is kind of like his, his thing. So it kind of felt like a good, all right, this is going to play to his strengths, but not be, like, back-breaking uh, in ca- uh, modular set. So, um, And we got good, I got good feedback on that one specifically for encounters to use. Yeah, I think it's fun. It's just the, the thought of it just makes me laugh. Yeah, it is a it is quite a sight. Well, do you want to do you want to go through the draft? How, the draft. How, did, how do we do this? How many players? All um, right, so we had um, fourteen players. Is that correct, or did we have twelve? No, we had twelve. Yeah, it's twelve. Twelve participants this time, and we split them um, between uh, two divisions, uh, and each division had its own separate draft. Um. The first division was we titled the Doom Division, um, and that consisted of yourself, Banana Crapshoot, Scott E., uh, Vardain, which is Steve from Critical Encounters, uh, John E. Wills, Inception, and Kennedy Hawk of Marvel Champions Monthly Fame. Um, And then the second division was uh, the Titan Division, um, which was uh, myself, Americano, uh, which again from Marvel Champions Monthly, um, drop it like it's hot, conspiracy, D House, and our defending champion Just Jack. And each of those lists I just listed were the uh, draft in order, like the order of the draft for that that division. So I'll just go over. Um, and ironically, we both had first picks um, overall in our respective d- divisions, which was uh, called out as. Uh, you know, a hoax right away. But hopefully uh, our evidence stood as we selected three random draft orders and then made someone pick a random number and I had them sent to you in a private message and we could, uh, we screenshotted that for <laughs> for people to uh, have evidence. Um, but in the in the Titan division, um, I, in the, with the first overall pick, I took Iron Man. Um, and then I'm just going to go through all my picks because I feel like it'll be easier in my... Second round pick, I took protection. Third round, I took aggression. And in the fourth round, with the very last pick of the entire draft, I wound up with Black Panther, which I was thrilled with. Uh, Americano took Captain America. I, I just real quick want to interject that before the draft, we talked a little bit of draft strategy, and that was your ideal draft. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, that's what I wanted. That's what I was targeting. I felt like it was realistic to get that, and it... it it went that way. My backup plan was uh, uh, I knew I was taking a hero in the last round, and I figured I would probably, judging by the way uh, the people in our Discord have been uh, evaluating Ms. Marvel, I thought for sure I was going to get Ms. Marvel and, and Black Panther was going to get taken before he came to me, um, which I'm more comfortable with Black Panther, but I think Ms. Marvel aggression is probably just as good, maybe even better in some situations. But uh, anyway, Americana took Captain America. Um, then he got leadership, then aggression, then Thor. So he got a pretty sweet um, setup as well. Uh, drop it like it's hot with Captain Marvel, 
which I know he said uh, he's comfortable with Captain Marvel, so that one held a lot more value to him, which I think is smart. Uh, leadership, protection, and Spider-Man. Conspiracy takes Captain America. Leadership, Captain Marvel, and Justice. D House takes Black Panther, Aggression, Spider-Man, and then Justice. And Just Jack with Iron Man, Protection, which is his go-to right there. Thor and Justice uh, for his second um, hero and aspect. So go, coming out of uh, the Titan division, uh, I felt pretty good about the draft. Um, a surprise, Thor went uh, twice. And no Ms. Marvel picks. I'm just trying to think about it. And I don't. Was there any other Black Panther picks? Or did, was I the only person that took Black Panther too? Uh, no. Know, no. D House took House Black took. Panther in the first round. That's right. Mm-hmm. So if you want, I'll, I'll read over the Doom Division draft. Yeah, please. So I had the first pick, um, and I took Captain America. With my second pick. In this, or with my pick in the second round, I took Black Panther. So then I just uh, had to deal with aspects. So I got Aggression and Justice. Um, second was Scott E. He took Captain Marvel uh, with his first pick. So our last draft, Scott E. had the first pick and I had the second pick. And we both took Captain America and Captain Marvel 1 or 2. So the trend continues. He also took Aggression, Black Panther, and Protection. Uh, Verdane picked third. He got Iron Man. Miss Marvel, the only person in the entire draft, either division, to take Miss Marvel. Um, protection and Justice. Johnny Wills took Captain America, Leadership, Iron Man, and Protection. That is a pretty stacked uh, little yeah. combo there. I think coming um, out of the draft, he gets the highest grade. Yep, I would agree. Um, Inception took Captain Marvel, Leadership, Aggression, and Thor. And picking last was Kennedy Hawk, and he took Leadership, Spider-Man, Thor, and Justice. So two Thors gone in each division. Miss Marvel gone once, uh, Spider-Man gone once each, right? No, I think Spider-Man... Did he go twice in yours? You just said I I don't remember. I I don't remember, but I thought he did. Uh Yeah, he went twice, D-House, and dropped the legged set. Yep. So that's interesting that... We had I think Spider Man is so good solo too. I was surprised he didn't get scooped up twice in Doom Division because just webbed up is just two rounds of the villain not attacking. Yeah. 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 So no She Hulk. That's not a big surprise. Um, yeah. We didn't think. Uh, I thought D House might just because he likes to. He likes Red uh, Hero. Prove people wrong. <laughs> yeah, he likes Red Hero. But no, he did not take She-Hulk. I think he was a little intimidated by the format itself, um, unwarrantedly, because I think he's he's just fine. He's going to handle it just fine. It's it's so it's so low key and easy to participate in. So. It's so easy uh, to get your games into that I haven't gotten any of mine in yet. <laughs> yeah, what I mean, it's you'll get it. You'll get them in. There's no rush to it either. You know, you got three weeks. So. Yeah. I actually got my first in right before we recorded this podcast, Banana. Yeah. Just so we had something a little extra to talk about for do, you. Do you want me to ask how it went? No, I don't. <laughs> well, how'd it go, <laughs> Tommy? Since we already talk- <laughs> yeah, let's, why not? So I uh, I decided um, for my first game against Rhino, I was going to take Black Panther Aggression. Um, figuring risky business would give me a little bit more time to set up. So I would use my um, Iron Man protection list there. Um, so my Black Panther aggression game was a loss. It lasted all of six rounds. Um, and I got KO'd by Rhino in the sixth round off of two attacks. Um, and he had 10 health left on stage three. So I was able to knock him into stage three pretty early. Um, I, the problem with the, um, with the deck really was I never was able to thwart. I saw two chase them downs. Uh, in my opening hand, which quickly got mulligan. Those were basically my uh, main ways of thwarting outside of, um, you know, just Black Panther's two thwart and uh, his... Tactical genius. Um, yeah, tactical genius. But with against Rhino, I typically like to grab the Vibranium suit with his setup ability because I know I'm going to be soaking a lot of damage because I try to stay in hero form. Um, 
So I grabbed that. I started with that and Panther Claws, uh, round one. was able to get them both out with Vibranium. Um, and the remainder of my hand was uh, playing a combat training. So I felt pretty good about my setup, but I was kind of dependent on seeing some Wakanda Forevers as Black Panther usually is. Um, yep. I also didn't start with an ally, so I knew I was going to soak some damage. No big deal. Soak some damage. I didn't even block because I wanted to make sure that I was able to attack with my combat training following turn. Um, and I, I, he didn't, he didn't do very much damage. I forget what his, his boost card was like a one. So I think I had four damage on me. Um, going into round two, um, my hand wasn't as good as my first hand. No surprise. Uh, I did get a Tigra on the board. Um, still no Wakanda Forevers. Um, can't remember what else I did that round. It was pretty insignificant. I think I might have used a mean swing and played Tigra. And I think that was all I did that round. Um, did some damage. Um, second round, I got a Shadows of the Past dealt to me, which stunk. Oof. Brought out yeah, Killmonger. That's rough. Yeah, it was not good. Um, but with the combat training, I had on deck, you know, the three attack and the two from Tiger, which would be able to kill him and heal Tiger. So I was like, okay, that's okay. I can, I can manage here. I'm just not going to be able to block. Uh, with Tiger, which I didn't that round anyway, luckily. Um, I blo- I wound up blocking with Black Panther. Oh, that's right. I did, couldn't attack because I blocked with Black Panther that round because um, I didn't want to block with Tiger yet. Um, so I, I didn't have a way to kill him at that point. Um, and then his side scheme, obviously, which just has the um, hazard icon. Um, but because I'm exhausted, I had no way to deal with his uh, side scheme. Right. Um, so, uh, the going into round three, I had to deal with three encounter cards. Same with round four. Eventually, I was able to play the Hulk, and the Hulk did some d- good damage for me because I had seen um, all three of my Vibraniums at that point, so I knew there was no wild resources. I also knew I had seen Tigra, I had seen my Hall of Heroes, and I had seen both of my um, uh, Chase Them Downs, so I knew that the odds of me drawing um, the mental or the the wild was very low so I took some swings with Hulk Um, it paid off Um, then I got my kids toys going off the background here Um, and then uh, getting dealt three encounter cards around just I couldn't keep up I didn't see my uh, Wakanda Forevers I drew four in one round of course which was unfortunate because I was only able to play um, two of them and eventually Rhino just, you know, outlasted me in attack. Oh, and, and also Hulk drew a wild resource on the, um, he, he hit one of my Wakanda Forevers on his uh, second attack. So he did good damage. Sandman and um, Shocker came up. So I had to deal with them in the midst of all that, as well as dealing with Killmonger. So it was a rough game. It's definitely a rough game, but I really wasn't able to get my feet under me um, and do very much at all. Yeah, it sounds like you had a good first turn, and after that, it just got out of hand. Yeah, it just was... The, the Hulk turn was good, too, because like the, the turn I played him, and he did five damage with, with a physical resource off the top, and I was feeling good. Um, and I knew my odds were low to draw any of the wild. Um, or I think there was one mental um, Wakanda Forever left, and then the two wild Wakanda Forevers, but outside of that, nothing in my deck was going to discard him. Of course, that's the thing I hit um, on the second activation of the hull so that kind of stuck yeah so the another question i have about that game is the round that rhino KOG was he riding a goblin glider glide, uh, no. the, the, the goblin glider no but he had pumpkin bombs okay well that's almost as ridiculous yeah. oh so. and i actually i had a chance where i thought i was gonna burst him down i was like oh man this is so good i'm gonna burst him down uh and the third encounter card that i revealed was the one that gives him plus five health Basically, Oof. it gives them like that armor. I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh my gosh, I can't get there!" So I had to change up my plan and um, deal with uh, Shocker and Sandman that that round who had come out. Because if I if I didn't have to deal with them and I, I didn't have to deal with that extra five health, the math had it so that I could burst him down. So that was pretty unfortunate. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's uh, heroic. That is heroic. Yes. So I have <laughs> lost five straight games in the draft league and no one should ever listen to my advice about this game. 
because I am terrible. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on. I haven't won a game uh, in draft league for a long time. So I don't know what to tell you, man. I won one yeah. game. I lost. What I went one and three. Right, I went one and three last time. Mm-hmm. And I haven't played one yet, so I lost three in a row. Um, so there's a chance at four in a row. Uh, when I play Rhino, I think I'm going to take my, uh, since I've Captain America, Black Panther, Aggression, and Justice, my plan is to take Cap Justice into Rhino and then have Black Panther Aggression for Risky Business. Yeah, I think that's a good idea because you could set up Black Panther. Like, Black Panther requires a fair amount of setup as well as Iron Man, so. Yeah. So one uh, one quick uh, thing about uh, Tigra, or Tigra, that uh, is a little rules nuance that some people might not realize is the um, her ability kicks off before she would deal herself consequential damage um, just as a heads up for people that, that don't know that so she has a response after Tigra attacks and defeats a minion heal one damage from her um, that would happen before she takes con- consequential damage consequential damage is the last thing that happens um, when a minion or ally attacks so if like uh, you're playing against Ultron with the uh, Tigra, and you hit a drone, um, you don't have any damage on you yet. So the heal fails, uh, you take one damage, and then you would attack a drone next turn or whatever, or get ready and hit another. Well, that one work. You could request a get a uh, get ready action, I guess. Um, attack with her again, and then she would heal a damage, so she wouldn't have any health, and then she would take another consequential damage at the end if you're following what I'm saying um just a little rules nuance that some people might not realize I threw out there since uh, I thought of it when you were talking about your uh Tigra play no I, I um yeah that is that is good advice that's uh, the stuff you learn in the the rules channel on the the Marvel Champions LCG Discord channel. Um, mm-hmm. Do you have anything else from Draft League you want to touch before we uh, move on? Um, no, I don't think so. I think there's a question about it. Um, so we could talk about that there. Um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, so this is going to be pretty light from us. I guess we're probably at around 37 minutes right now. So without uh, with Jack bailing on us because uh, he's not following quarantine protocols and um, we just really wanted to no new stuff out for us so we don't really have a lot to say on Black Widow or Doctor Strange yet because we haven't uh, played them um, we just mostly wanted to talk about Draft League and spoilers well, I mean, technically I played Doctor Strange I just have his hero set proxy <laughs> <laughs> well I mean we all know he's strong so <laughs> um mm-hmm do you alright so I'll ask you a question about Doctor Strange what's uh, his weakness right every hero is designed in a way that they have some type of um, downside what's his man I don't know he's got 10 health I don't I don't know he's really good how does he do uh, if he gets swarmed by minions can he handle that yeah he doesn't have the AoE that's what we talked about thank you you were you were laying that up I haven't played him in a while but yeah he has a hard time dealing with uh, a widespread board for sure on his own at least he needs a little help with that whether it's from allies or the teammates he could use some help uh, with AoE effect what other heroes uh, can't handle the minion swarm the wide villain Hmm. boards I think Captain Marvel can't Um, she doesn't have any AoE but off the yeah, top of my head, I think. Well, I mean, Miss Marvel doesn't have it, but she has. She makes the best use of melee, um, within Biggin. Yeah. But that's you know within one aspect. But she has a hard time with um, swarms outside of that. Iron Man doesn't really have AOE outside of War Machine, um, but he gets so many triggers between the Gauntlet, Gauntlet, and then his his exhaust to attack and then has ready from his arc reactor for another attack so he can do like lots of little damage in different areas right um so it kind of feels like he can handle a swarm even though it's not necessarily aoe 
Because let's be honest, War Machine's effect is mm, subpar at best. Yeah, it's great um, when it like works, but how yeah. often does it really work? Yeah, it's not that not that efficient. Um, hmm, let's see who else. She Hulk has ground stomp. Um, Spider Man can't deal with minion swarm. Yeah, Spider Man can't either. So, so it's probably like a fifty fifty split, right? Yeah, it's about fifty fifty. I'd say as far as built in. Yeah, because like energy mm-hmm. daggers. Yeah, uh, shield daggers toss, might be one of the best. Ground stomp and lightning strike. So it's, mm-hmm. it's about fifty fifty. That's interesting. Maybe not to the listeners, uh, but it is. To me. <laughs> That's um, probably intentional. So real quick, I want to talk about Sentry. I just thought of something. This is makes for really, really good radio, uh, but the art is pretty good for it. Yeah, so. I really like the way he's grasping that that um, that assault rifle. The, the artist really must know uh, how uh, someone actually holds a gun. Yep, he looks like he... I mean, he, oh, I thought we were talking about Winter Soldier. What are you saying? He does not look like he punched himself in the chin while trying to... <laughs> uh, properly uh hold a, a weapon so um see my job for four years was uh m4s and rifles and stuff so when i see that it really bothers me but enough about the winter soldier stuff um i guess we'll move into listener questions if that's cool with you yeah absolutely so we got our main man here conspiracy in the discord um says he knows that some people are put off of the game because it's not something you can pick up and play after you open the box unless you do a lot of modifying and adjusting uh, with the setups do you have any tips on keeping all the cards organized to make it easier to pick up and play for rapid deck building um I mean, the first thing to do is to keep your villains extremely organized. Have, you know, all of them separated as clearly as possible. Have your standard set separate. Have all your modular sets separate from that. Have the expert set separate from that. That way, uh, the encounter deck is as easy to construct as possible. Um, The next thing that you can do is separate all your heroes and their sets of 15... Um, if you're a sleeve kind of person, which I am, then uh, to make things easy, I would recommend sleeving everything in the same color. Um, and then if you really want to streamline things, um, since every we know every hero signature for 15 cards is 15 cards, I would make uh, like a generic 25 card aspect and or basic card set to go with each of them. So maybe you just go like Avengers Mansions, Helicarrier, the, you know, Energy Genius, uh, you know, maybe an ally or two from the Aspect, a Nick Fury, a Mockingbird, you know, mix it up. uh, And then, you know, for aggression, you know, throw in, you know, two Relentless Assault, an Uppercut, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. Just make it, you know, a 25-card standard, like, pack almost that you can just say, all right, I want to play Iron Man protection. I'm going to take the 15 from Iron Man, the 25 I set aside for protection, and we're going to play against, you know, uh, Mutagen standard with Goblin gimmicks. You're done. Yeah, that was going to be similar to my answer because they actually touched this on Marvel Champions Monthly. They talked about um, the game Smash Up. Um, I've never oh, played yeah. it. But they they talked about for like casual player to introduce people yep. to the game. That's basically what you were talking about, where you build an at you build like three different aspect decks, yeah. or four different aspect decks, and then they're generic, super super low key, low to the ground basic decks that you can play against anything. And then you just it's kind of, it's the same thing you said, but is the, the smash up idea. Yeah, you just the, the key is to just take the twenty five like most straightforward, just good cards. Like you yep. don't want to try to build any synergy or anything. Like just what's the most efficient? Oh, energy barrier is an incredibly efficient card. Throw three of them in. Yep. Yep. So that that's pretty much what my answer is going to be too. Um, and then he had another question: Could you assemble any combination deck in under two three minutes? Uh, we touched on that, so I'm going to say yes. And then this one, uh, 
from Conspiracy again. Any advice on how to learn from a loss? What do you look for, or are they usually due to RNG? And since you have the most recent loss uh, of <laughs> the most experienced loser <laughs> uh, of anybody on the podcast, I'll, I'll let you hit that one yeah. first, and then so I'll give I, my I two cents. Okay. Um, the 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 key for learning from losses for me is to realize the moment in the game where it began to slip away, and then the moment where you reach the point of no return. Um, and I know in my game. Um, when I hit Shadows of the Past, which was unfortunate, um, the problem was for me that I um, <clears throat> I had the, I can't remember what the other side scheme I had that came out, but it had the Crisis icon, so I had to deal with that. And then the Shadows of the Past added um, the Killmonger side scheme, which had the Hazard icon. And you know, every round I was getting one more. Um, threat on the main scheme from Ryan. so I was at the point where I was I, I was unable to thwart effectively with the deck in general but now I was in a situation where I couldn't I couldn't get out from the hole that I was in and because it's heroic that can that can happen quite often so it revealed maybe a flaw in the deck or maybe a flaw in my approach and, and determining which it was is hard to say but it, it basically came down to if I saw advance I was going to lose no matter what. And I didn't see advance. He wound up killing me, but that was because I had accepted the fact that if I saw advance, I was going to lose, and I was just trying to kill him as quick as possible. Um, so I took I took one of the, the paths that I found to be the one that I thought I had the best chance of winning, knowing the deck that I had constructed, knowing what cards were left in the deck for me to draw. I was anticipating drawing my Wakanda Forever spread across two to three turns as opposed to all in one turn um but that's not how it played out so um yeah i just think the key is is identifying where where things went wrong when they started to go wrong and when they reached a point of no return right i think those are good points because there's there's different there's different um points in a game where like the first one is like your setup, right? So how fast can you set up? It depends on your hero and obviously how you draw. And then it's um, another one is if you get behind or not, if you get ahead of the villain by doing a lot of damage early, and maintaining board state, like all those things can add up. Um, and the encounter cards just add that random element to it that can screw you um, really hard. So those different spots in the game like you said, identifying where things start to get out of hand and where they completely uh, put you in some quicksand. Identifying those points, I think, will help you. Um, and it might help you with your lines of play. And one thing I think that'll help just overall um, play experience and to like improve play is just maximizing uh, like hand management and having efficient use of the cards in your hand each round like if you're holding two to three cards each round like you're probably doing something wrong um you want to play out as much of your hand as possible that's just my two cents yeah i agree with all that i definitely do all righty kennedy hawk um if you could design a card for your favorite aspect, what would it do, and how would you balance it? Man. Um, my favorite aspect is, is protection. Um, man, a card... Oh, I don't know. It would be probably just energy barrier. <laughs> I don't know. That card is insane. Um, I don't know. My favorite card... Or my favorite aspect, what card would I design? I'm not sure. That's one I'd have to give a lot of thought. And seeing as this question was asked 15 minutes ago or 16, <laughs> 17 minutes ago, I don't think I've had enough time to ponder it. Um, man, I yeah, don't... I'm still thinking about it too. This makes for really good radio. Um, yeah, you can listen to us, thank guys. 
smoke detector might go off because it's burning here. Or your wife's just taking a shower. Um, One or the other. Really hard to tell. Mrs. Titan is just taking a shower. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Titan. My favorite aspect is aggression. Um, a good aggression card would be... Um, hmm. See, same thing. Like 15 minutes ago. Um, it would do something like... It would be kind of like a swinging web kick or like a hammer throw, but for aggression, it would be like a... I'd make it a four cost, though, so it's a little more in line with other um, aspect cards. That's probably too expensive for an event. So maybe it would be three cost, seven damage. um, Three cost, seven damage event that deals... Uh, I have nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> I was trying to spitball there, and I got nothing. Um, Moon Knight Aggression Ally. There it is. Uh, that is a double-sided card. Uh, no, that wouldn't work. But it would be a Moon Knight Aggression Ally. Uh, three costs. Uh, one thwart for two consequential damage. Uh, three attack for one consequential damage. Three health. Uh, response: When Moon Knight enters play, deal two damage to three different enemies. That's it. That's what it is. Overpowered. You're welcome. Beautiful. Yep. That's what I got. Print it. Put it on the card. I'm going to proxy it whenever I learn how to use Photoshop because I did make a custom uh, Moon Knight uh, hero set and I have no idea how to use Photoshop, so that's why I haven't um, put the cards out for people to enjoy. Um, Do you have anything else you want to hit on, talk about, any uh, questions, complaints, gripes for me um, about how I run a crappy podcast? I appreciate you've been at it. You do a lot of work uh, for the community and this podcast. Uh, and J- Just Jack just let you down. So, shots fired at Just Jack, even though he will never listen to this, ever. Uh, no, not even yeah. if there's a fire. Um, yeah, but that's... Yeah, I I appreciate you. That's, that's, uh, that's what I got for you. Are you playing any other games right now, or is it just Marvel Champions when you have time when the, the kids aren't I'm, going crazy? I've been dabbling with Room Terra just because it's a mobile game and it's like oh, I could play a couple games of this before I go to sleep or on my lunch break at work or you know whatever um, so I've been dabbling with that what um, did I I called that something in Discord the other day what did I call that I don't remember you guys were, were hollering at me I didn't know it was uh, uh, so I called it the uh, the flat earth of <laughs> card games it's fun. I mean, it's pretty interactive. It's got the the uh, like turn based uh, round mechanic. It's on mobile so, now. It is on mobile now. Yes. Oh man, I wish I didn't know that. Cause See? that's ask. the only thing. That's the only thing that was keeping me out was that it wasn't on mobile. Yep, it's on mobile. My brother uh, runs a podcast for that Twin Sons podcast. So. Uh, he roped me in. He made me promise him that uh, I'd play. So, here I am. Give it a shot. College try. The old college try. I haven't gotten very far in that game, though, because, like I said, time has been precious. So, How does it play on mobile? Does it play like Hearthstone on mobile? Yeah, it's pretty similar to Hearth. Um, it's good. I mean, it, it's smooth. I haven't had any issues. Like I said, I haven't played a ton, but I haven't had any issues. Interesting. Maybe I will look into it, but I'm going to try not to. Um, <laughs> of the spoilers we've seen so far, mm-hmm. um, ours included, which one is your favorite? Ooh, which one is my favorite? Which one is my favorite, or which one is the best? What are we going with here? Uh, we're going to do both those questions. Oh, both those questions. Well, I guess favorite, it's got to be ours, right? 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So good So I'm going to stay on brand. So I want to talk about for a second. Um, inspiring presence. I know presence. which one's the best. <laughs> yeah. Okay, inspiring presence. Because leadership yeah. needed more help in the Boggs Fathers. Like, leadership needs some help. So this is this is the craziest card. I like. <laughs> I think they've printed so far. This card's insane. So if you don't know what Inspiring Presence does, it is a one cost leadership event that uh, produces a mental resource. It says play only if your identity has the Avenger trait. Um. So it's everyone on their hero side except for Miss Marvel. And the hero action is heal one damage from an ally and ready it. Heal one damage from an ally and ready it for one resource. Yeah, this card's insane. What? Yes, this card is absolutely insane. Like, I'm trying to, like, what? Like, so... There goes even crazier vision plays. Just yeah, vision. This this card single handedly. If you thought vision was like a trap or bad or whatever before, this card single handedly makes vision very viable, in my opinion. Oh man, this is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. This is really good, and this plays into that the like cost curve of allies, like making those. Those allies that are going to stay on the table that have that slightly larger health pool that have those bigger stats that you want to get more uses out of, like this plays into all of that. Once again, Spider Woman leadership aggression. Play down that century with an inspired on it. There's not enough slots in the deck to make the deck that you want. Listen to me. You can, you can have fifty. You can have fifty cards. You can have fifty cards. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's a good thing, but trust me, it's going to be hard to, to make cuts in that deck. Oh, man. No, like, this, is, this is definitely a shoe in for that because it's like, oh, it's a cheap, you know, on aspect event. Not only does it heal your ally, but it readies it. Yeah. It's like if you teamworked it or something and then. Or did this and then teamworked it. Could, it's like playing Honorary Avenger and Get Ready. Yeah. At the same time. Mm. What's the same cost investment? Two cards. Yeah. Itself and another. But it is, Man. it's, it's, it's really cool. freaking good. But Sentry is my favorite. But Inspiring Presence is really good. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk about any of the other spoilers we've seen? Uh, I like all the spoil. I I actually think all the spoil spoilers we've seen uh, to this point have been really good. Um, Crushing blow is just like it's just good value for Hulk um, as a as a uh, signature card. She Hulk, huge huge damage potential. Um, I don't like the two consequential damage on her thwart, which is unfortunate because that's really what you kind of need that ability to thwart occasionally um, in aggression and I, I guess she can because she has the four health and you kind of want some damage on her anyway so it only turns her attack up quicker but you get less uses out of her um, let's see what what else do we have? inspiring presence which we know about uh, and then we have clash of the titans from uh, our, our boys over at um, critical, critical encounters getting the uh, the nemesis set treachery card this one's interesting um i just there's so many boost icons in his in his nemesis set it's they terrifying. all have threes don't they yeah everything's got three boost icons terrifying the enemy with the highest attack attacks the hero or ally with the highest attack first players decides it tie yeah it's just really good clash of the titans is is a is a scary card and it's perfect for hulk because like he, he's almost certainly going to have the highest attack on the table unless you're playing with i guess spider woman yeah she has to do a lot more work to get there um mm, she just has to play cards <laughs> um i think the worst one is the one that the, <laughs> the marvel champions monthly got the martial prowess yeah that's the most recent one right that we saw uh, today today yeah. they put it out so that's uh, an upgrade skill two cost 
Play under any player's control, maximum per player, resource, exhaust, martial prowess, generate a physical resource, which is cool, but this one has a downside. Um, you can only use it on an attack event, which it is an aggression card, so that's not a huge deal. Um, I still think this is a really good playable card. I think it's less exciting than some of the other ones we've seen, but I think this is a really solid card. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I play it in an aggression deck, but um, depends on the build. I mean, you're you're thinking about these builds. There, you're trying to really streamline and play like lots of things that stick to the table and play less events. So I agree. In that type of build, you probably wouldn't want this. But if you have a deck that, on average, is going to have just one attack event, you know, per per hand, oh it's yeah, fine. If, if you have yeah five or six events in your deck, and um, plus, that are attack plus events. The yeah, you. I mean, just think about your signature set. You might have five, four, roughly. Yeah, from that, and then all the aspect ones. Like, it's not unreasonable that you'll have one per turn. So I think that more often than not, you're going to use this card if you play it early. And if you need, I mean, if you need the physical resource, that's more reason to to like it. But really, it's just the resource that you want every round. Not necessarily the physical typing. Yeah. I don't know. I just think there's that attack event. If you can guarantee that you get one attack event per round that costs you a resource, then yeah, it's definitely worth it. I mean, it's worth it on a relentless assault because it triggers the overkill. Yep. Yep, that's a big upside and a good synergy right off the bat. Yeah. Um, well, I think we'll start wrapping this up. Uh, you got any final thoughts for uh, no. both our listeners out there? No, I don't think so. I'm I'm grateful for the spoilers uh, to FFG and Evan for reaching out to you and uh, including us in that. I think that's awesome. I think that's a really cool thing they did. Oh, you know what um, we didn't even to... talk about? What's that? Sorry. Claw your way through May. Claw your way through May. Because <laughs> we're, we're acting out and living that meme dream. It's more like claw your way through spoiler season at this point. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'm sure everyone knows what claw your way through May is, but if you don't, it was like a unified community effort of content creators to all like cover uh, claw through May, and then uh, the spoiler things happened, and most people have been focused on the spoilers or the, the French leaks. Um, but sorry, I cut you off there, so you can continue. No, I, well, I mean news is news, so you're gonna cover what's hot. And Claw is it, uh, it's cool that we are unifying and doing that and, and putting out a lot of content about Claw. But at the same time, when there's new stuff to talk about, we're gonna talk about new stuff. That's right. Um, so I think that'll do it for this edition of the Side Scheme Podcast. For Tommy of Titan, I am Banana Crapshoot. Keep clawing your way through spoiler season and uh, stay scheming champions. I am Why is this? Why is this? Did we do it? That was working. That was working. Yeah. I was trying to play some music at the end here, you know? Um, so that's it. That's uh, how you do a somewhat listenable to podcast. Yeah! Uh...